morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So, I know, you know what? I, I always look out the window for some reason. Not sure why. So, welcome everyone. Um, things are a little bit different this week. My background is a little bit different this week. I, well, let me back up for a second. I always forget the little intro part. You guys know that. Um, so, my name is Lael Konkar, and I have a business called Lael by Mail. And I do lots of things, different kits by mail, different classes, and then I have an online store that has all different kinds of things, goodies to go along with that. So, um, in this video, well, it's kind of a video series, you guys. Um, 18 weeks ago now, <laughs> yeah. one of these days, I'm gonna be like 3,212 weeks ago when we started this. Um, 18 weeks ago, I started doing a, back then what my thought was would be um, maybe a handful of free classes about Traveler's Notebooks because that's one of my passions. I love Traveler's Notebooks and I thought it'd be kind of fun. Well, fun. At that time it was mid-May or mid-March when everything kind of went crazy with the coronavirus and I thought this could be something fun to kind of keep our minds off of what was going on. Fast forward now to week 18. So last week I switched things up a bit and said I was going to start doing just a couple a month. And now I did that last week and this week. So basically what this is all about, if you are just joining me, I talk about Traveler's Notebooks and I've done 16 classes about just kind of lots of different things that you can do with Traveler's Notebooks. So if you're new to Traveler's Notebooks, go back and find um, week one because that will be super helpful. I've also linked to the series in the description of the video. So that is, um, that is what we are doing. Uh, up until this point, I've always been at home and I have a very different backdrop at home and you guys are used to seeing my craft room, scrapbook room, what have you. Uh, and I am not there today. I am actually coming to you live from a city called Cheney in Washington State, and um, it's a little bit outside of Spokane. I am here because I am teaching at a retreat, and it was to be an in-person retreat, and it is a virtual retreat. So you might think to yourself, well, if it's a virtual retreat, why are you in Washington? Couldn't you just do it from home? Yes, I could. Um, however, I kind of piggybacked on coming here because we thought it would be fun for me to do the retreat here. Um, but then also piggy packed on um, a kind of quick getaway to a lake in the area called Priest Lake. So now that I bring up the retreat, welcome. We have some special, well, some guests. Yes, special guests. So today um, we have some folks that are also watching that are attending the virtual retreat. The retreat is put on by an amazing store here in the area called Three Craft Chicks. And um, the owner, Michelle, and her daughter, Lauren, are just some of the neatest people around. So I'm thrilled to be here. And when I said to them, hey, what do you guys think about, um, you know, I've been doing these Saturday classes, would you be okay if I did one here? And they said, sure, love it. It just so happens that here at the retreat, I'm teaching a couple of classes, but one of the classes I will be teaching this afternoon is a class on Traveler's Notebook. So um, this is kind of fun because everyone that will participate in that class later today that has to do with the retreat um, kind of gets a little extra here. So I am in my hotel room. That's why you see the bed behind me. Um, I don't normally film with the bed behind me, although that would be okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I just have to show you guys, if you see that little pillowcase back there, um, Michelle and Lauren have done the most amazing things for this retreat. And one of them was they had special pillowcases made the um the the theme for the retreat is camp so it's like we're camping so they've just done some really neat really cool little details but um anyhow they um i will link later once the video is done i you guys only got about half my links done so once i'm done i will come back and link to you or you can go to three craftchicks.com it's the number three craftchicks.com and learn a little bit more about the retreats. But I think we may do, um, I don't know, maybe we'll do like a live here to talk about the retreats because it's kind of cool. We'll think about that later. Okay, so uh, today we are going to uh, talk about memory keeping in your traveler's notebook. And 
Uh, memory keeping and listing. Those are probably the two things that I do most often in my traveler's notebook and the memory keeping definitely um, holds a dear place in my heart because I've been memory keeping or scrapbooking or whatever we like to call it, my gosh, for about 22 years ago now. And I love the format of a traveler's notebook to do that. So I am going to flip the camera here. I'm hoping the light is, I think, <clears throat> I think the light's going to be okay. You guys, it's a there's a ton of natural light right here, so um, I'll be on a on a desk, so the surface will be darker, but I think we'll be good. So I'm going to flip the camera, and as I do that, oh, hi, Rachel. Okay, so as I do that, I'm going to um, also turn on my iPad so I can see the comments as they're coming in. For those of you that may be new to these videos or these classes, there is a chat room over on the right-hand side of your screen, and that is a live chat. So if you would like to kind of pipe in, a lot of the ladies that watch on a regular basis get gotten kind of gotten to know each other, and um, but lots of chat, and sometimes you guys ask questions, and most of the time I see the questions, but if I don't, then um, maybe ask it again, and then I may see it. So um, chat happens over in the right-hand side of the screen. Oh, and I know if my, well, Karen, I have lots of Karen friends. And when I say Karen, I mean, they're real Karens. They're not the hashtag Karen. Um, my friend Karen, K-A-R-Y-N Haynes, is always so good to remind everybody of this. But if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps YouTube and their algorithm to say, hey, maybe this would be a good thing to show to other people that might be interested. So um, if you would also, if you're doing a live chat, if you would pipe in and say hi, tell me your name and where you're from. For those of you that are not chatting or um, for those of you that may be watching this on a replay, I would love it if you drop down into the comments um, below the video and just say hi, tell me where you're from, uh, whether you use Traveler's Notebooks or not, anything like that, whatever you'd like to share so that I know who's here. Okay, friends, so now is when we get the little bit of the... Um, you want you get my arm shot. We always know I hate that. Uh, you guys look at you can see. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, hang on. Um, I just did the wrong thing there. So hang on. You'll see in a second how. Um, D to D. This one. Where's my Sammy when I need him? All right. See, so look at you guys. It is a mess in this room. Let me tell you what. Okay, we're rotating. Hang on. Hang on. This little setup here, you guys. Hang on. Uh, 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 hang on. Let's see what's going on. Oh, you know what I'm afraid of, you guys? Let's see. Hang tight with me. This weekend, technology has not been my friend. It has not been my friend. So let's see what we're looking at. I'm bringing you up on my iPad so I can see what we are seeing. Oh, look it, isn't that lovely? We have part of the floor, so hang tight with me for a sec. This is gonna come back here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, I think we're good. So we may be a little bit closer than we normally are, but I think that's going to work. You can kind of see the floor, you can kind of see the table. This is like truly doing this um, on the fly, right? All right, let's move this. You know, I always have my setup all ready to go at my house and dee dee dee, let's see if that's any better. That's gonna make it worse, I'm afraid. All right, we're getting there, friends. We are getting there. It's the monster at Camp, Camp Lottawashi. So um, that is what the retreat is called, you guys. It's called Camp Lake Lottawashi. And you know how much I love my washi, so it's just perfect for that. We'll get it here. Um, my little stand traveled in my duffel bag. And so it is, um, it's not its usual stance. Let's see if I can move the bed out of the way. Oh, joys. All right, friends. Okay. I think we are good to go. The other thing that's a little odd about this, you guys, for me is that um, when I teach and when I always do the lives at home, I stand 
So I spend a good portion of my day standing. And here, obviously the desk is not tall enough. It is not a standing desk. So I am sitting, which will be a whole other interesting scenario for us as I am sitting. All right, so friends, here we go. Let's see, we have Christine, we have Julianne, we have Terry. Oh gosh, goodness, goodness, Britta from Calgary. And that's what's been so fun about these, you guys. Um, we have people that are here from literally all over the world, which is so cool. But we have um, lots of, lots of, well, I would normally say lots of locals from Washington, but because it's a virtual retreat, it's lots of people from a lot of different places. In Calgary, Colleen, guess what I forgot? I did forget Scatter the Squirrel. Uh, so yeah, Scatter the Squirrel is not with me today, but you know, let's see, actually, I wouldn't be surprised if in one of my little die cut packs here, there's a little squirrel roaming around, but Scatter the Squirrel will be here with us in spirit. All right, let's see if I can just make that a little bit better. Oh, there we go. I just moved the table away a little bit. Okay, so not perfect, but you know what? It is awesome. And my friend Mariana from Busseria is so, so, so jealous. I wish I was in Mexico right now. Okay, friends. So, oh, San Luis Obispo. And I, um, Diane, that is one of the places that I've never been, but I would definitely love to visit one of these days. Um, okay, friends. We are ready to go. So when we do these lives and when I'm kind of just working, that is what I'm doing. I am working in my traveler's notebooks, doing a little memory keeping, and I kind of talk about what I do or why I do things or um, how I might pair one thing with another. Phyllis, Rancho Cucamonga. Um, we used to live in Penasquitas, and I think it's kind of near where you are. Um, but it is, you guys, this to me, this is like we are all together and we are crafting. We are all in one big giant room together and we're crafting. And sometimes what happens when we're crafting, especially if you're Lael and you're a talker and you are an extrovert and you have not been around a lot of people in a really long time because of the coronavirus, you chit chat and you talk about something and then I call it you squirrel. So I go a different angle and we, you know, get distracted and start talking about the pattern of the carpet in my hotel room, whatever it is. So just know that these lives are, um, they're not super structured. They're not as if I was teaching a real class. Real classes are definitely very structured. And so this is just us kind of crafting and having fun together. And I've mentioned before, um, everyone that joins, I just consider you friends because we're, um, we're all spending time doing what we love together. All right. So when it comes to memory keeping in a traveler's notebook, I have been using traveler's notebooks probably for the last, I've got to get my hands are going to have to move a little bit. Um, I have been using traveler's notebooks the last five ish years and I use them for all different kinds of things for making lists um, for making notes for myself. I use them for business, but then I also like to use them to craft in. And as I'm crafting, there are a couple of different traveler's notebooks that I have shown you guys over the last couple of months. And one is my coronavirus traveler's notebook. The, excuse me. This is the second uh, coronavirus traveler's notebook that I have been working on. So my first one is more or less done. The second one is close to being done. So what I thought I would do is just take a look at how I have used this traveler's notebook for memory keeping. And then we'll do, um, I'm gonna do one spread in my traveler's notebook because it's pretty relevant to, I think, what some of, well, in all cases, I think, almost all cases, what we all have been going through, but in other cases, what some of us have been going through and what some of us waited a really long time to do and then finally got to do. All right, so um, my traveler's notebook for coronavirus, as I mentioned, this is the second one, and I have been doing memory keeping. Coronavirus, you guys, in our lifetime is, is crazy, and we hope that um, the children of the world, our next generations and next generations and next generations, don't ever have to go through something like this again. And it's important for me to document this because that's part of what I do, right? Um, we, I just like to document things and something like this to me is really important to document, even if it's just for myself, you know, 10 years from now, hopefully I will look back on some of the documenting that I've done and think, gosh, 
you know, I, I remember so much about that. But on the other hand, there are a lot of things I don't remember, right? We're not going to remember, hopefully, what it felt like to wear a mask everywhere we went or um, some of the news that was happening and things like that. So that is why I've been documenting in a traveler's notebook, the coronavirus. And it is a mixture of um, personal stories. Uh, this was the first time my husband and I had really gone out. I think we went to the post office because I had to um, send some kits out and we both had our masks on and that was back then it was so 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 foreign um, that was in early April and now isn't it interesting it's just kind of um, I went to the store here last night and everybody wears their mask something a year ago we would have all thought oh my goodness this is what is going on why do all these people have masks on anyhow so that's how I've chosen to do some of my memory keeping in a traveler's notebook and some of the photos are mine, and this is where I think it's really important. When you are documenting, especially when it comes to traveler's notebooks, I guess really with everything, I always like to say, you do you. It is so, so important that you do what works for you. If you wanna use different product, you should use different product. Um, if all you wanna do is write, then you know what? Just write, you don't have to put stickers down, you don't have to use washi, you don't have to use photos, you may do, um, writing only, or you may come all the way over to this side of the spectrum and just do photos and not do any writing. So whatever works for you. Some things that I document are using my own photos. Other things I document, I always like to joke, I, um, I hit up my best, best photographer friend, who's the most amazing photographer friend in the world, and his slash her name is Google. Google, google.com, right? So if I am looking for a photo, for example, uh, back in April, there were a number of hotels that were turning on their different lights in their rooms to resemble the shape of hearts, right? So that's definitely not my photo. I was not in downtown Salt Lake City and up, you know, on top of a building and snapped that shot. I did see that on Instagram, and then I just right-clicked, saved that photo to my camera roll, and then printed it. So a mixture of different photos that I've taken, different photos that um, I pulled off of Instagram or Google. And in other cases, they are going to be things like this. So these aren't necessarily photos, these are well, I guess they're kind of photos, but they're they're JPEGs that I would find on a website. So this was the New York Times website, and it was a really nice visual for me that showed back then which states were having residents stay home, shelter in place, and other states that weren't or were partial. So I pull, when I'm documenting this particular topic, I pull photos and content from everywhere. If you have a favorite news source, whatever that may be, if you go to their website, you'll find all different kinds of um, images and graphics like that. And then in some cases, I'm not, um, I'm not using photos at all. So for example, here, I've just done some stamping and a little card and made a little flip up and did my journaling underneath. This was a funny one and I didn't have a photo of this because it happened to be the second earthquake that we had had um, in Utah in, uh, in a month. It was almost 30 days to the day. Um, the first one we had, I think, was March 18th, and the second one we had was April um, April 14th. So that, again, something like that, because it was such a, a, really a big part of what was happening in my world at that time, I decided to document. And I just, you know, went um, and did a little bit of searching on Google and found that, and then just printed off just like it was a photo. And we'll talk about printing a little bit, but not a ton. Um, I still need to do a, um, a kind of a, a video on uh, that little printer that I use. So that is on my to-do list. Anyhow, so just documenting different, different events. This, um, you guys may remember, this was a concert, the One World Together at Home concert that raised $127 million for the World Health Organization. So just different things that I chose to document. So, oh, and there's our little squirrel, right? Although we have the real squirrel that's normally with us. So that is um, that is just kind of an idea of how I've been using one of my traveler's notebooks to do some memory keeping. This one right here, this is the start of my third 
Coronavirus Traveler's Notebook. Now, this one is nowhere in the same state as the last one. And what I mean by that, well, same state. I don't mean Washington because we're together in the same state. Um, oh, you know what? So hang on. Nick is here. Hi, honey. So you guys, my husband is here. He's in the same state. Um, however, he is at the lake where... I came from yesterday. So, and you guys, Sam told me yesterday, sweet Sam, I just have to squirrel for a minute. Here, we'll do this. I have to squirrel for a minute. There's our squirrel. Um, if you are just joining us and you haven't been participating um, live with me before, Sam is our 19 year old, 19. Yes, he's still 19. Um, gosh, it feels like we've been at this for years, you guys, right? Um, our 19 year old and he is um, has been home with us with the coronavirus and early on especially probably the first 11 or 12 videos he was um, he was helping me he was like helping produce things for me so that was really fun and I know a lot of the ladies got to know Sam so yesterday um, Sam said mom now what time you're doing 10 o'clock again right because I might I might chime in Sam is at home in Utah so and you know what um, I think I saw Veronica said that um, he, yes, Veronica, he does have a sweet spirit and um, it's really sweet that you can tell that about him because that's just who he is. And I always say some things are nature, some things are nurture and um, that sweet spirit with Sam was definitely uh, nature. He, um, he just was born that way. He's just always had that sweet spirit. So, all right, squirrel, squirrel's going off to the side. So uh, my second my third coronavirus traveler's notebook and this is the one that i will be doing my first spread in this morning this one is um definitely not well it's still definitely a work in progress and you'll see this is kind of how i approach things and i think this is a really good thing to share because um, sometimes we want to document something and if we are scrapbooking, for example, we can do a 12 by 12 layout. It doesn't matter if we rewinded five years and are scrapping photos from five years ago and we're not caught up or if we decide to scrapbook something today. Because when we're working in a 12 by 12 format, especially with a 12 by 12 album, we can go back in and put that finished project in wherever we want. When it comes to a traveler's notebook, it's a little bit harder to go in and do that because you don't necessarily know what is coming before it as you're still working on it. So my solution for that is to work with sticky notes. And I just start to plan things out and I have little stickies on what I'm going to put, where I'm going to put it. In some cases, I have different screenshots or photos that I have printed. This had something to do with um, the coronavirus task force and they were talking about phasing that out way back in May. Um, so I just have my little notes and this kind of thing just kind of stays together so that when I am ready to work on any of these spreads or any of these pages, I kind of have what I need and I know where things are. This was one of the lists that we did in one of our past Saturday classes. And I knew it was when Wendy did this was mid-May. So I kind of figured out where it would work in the grand scheme of things, which now takes us to the first spread that we're going to work on in class today. And that is, we're 23 minutes in and now we're gonna work. Okay, but we sometimes have to get through all that kind of explanation stuff ahead of time. Okay, so I already know here that I want to work on a spread. So sometimes when I am working in my traveler's notebook, some things are a spread, like this was a spread, and then other things, there's another spread, other things are just a, let's see, single, well, let me find one of my single pages because I have a lot of doubles now. Um, lots of doubles. Okay, well, that was an example of a single page, right? Hey, it looks like Sam is here. Oh, Sammy, I love you, sweetie. You're so sweet. Hi, Mommy. Love you. Kill it. And hi, everyone. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Love you. Hope you're being good at, how, at home by yourself, right? Now, Sam's going to have now 173 moms and maybe one dad since Nick's on, or if any other dads or men are on, you don't have to be a dad, you don't have to be a mom. Everyone here is going to give Sam the mom um, advice of don't do anything bad while your parents are out of town, especially when they're out of state. Don't get in trouble. He won't, he'll be good, right Sam? Okay, anyhow, so sometimes single spread, but in this case, I am going to do a double spread. So, 
Um, back in May, and I know it was May 13th, and the only reason, yeah, don't crash on your bike. I know, Mindy, right? Yeah, no, let's, no visits to the ER during coronavirus. We already did that once. Okay, so I know this was back in May, this photo. This photo um, was a very much long-awaited, long-anticipated um, venture for me in coronavirus, right? So you guys know I have blonde hair, and you know that from a couple of reasons. Number one, because you see me, and then number, number two, sometimes I say things that definitely indicate that I have blonde hair, if you know what I mean. And I can always say that and joke because I'll always joke that I can, you know, make fun of dumb blondes because sometimes I'm the biggest one you've ever met. However, um, I was born blonde, um, toehead. I had super white hair as a kid and through high school. And then when college started rolling around, my hair started getting a little darker in certain spots. And that happens to the best of us, right? So for years, I have had my hair highlighted until the coronavirus hit. And it just so happened for me that before coronavirus, um, I was just about due for my every six week appointment. And because of coronavirus, I missed that. So if you watched any of my earlier videos, you may have noticed my lovely roots and it was just kind of, it's, it's, it's what we get, right? So um, the first time that I went to finally have my hair done was on May 13th. And I know it was May 13th because I was able to go back into my camera roll on my phone, which is the best thing ever, you guys. You can, um, you know, if you don't, if you're not sure when you took a photo, all your photos are dated, right? So you know when that was taken. So I went back and said, oh, that was May 13th. Now the woman that has done my hair has done my hair for, my gosh, probably 25 years. And she has um, a little salon that's right outside of her house. And it has one chair in it. So I felt pretty safe. I was the first appointment of the morning. She had a mask on, I had a mask on, and all was good. So as I was processing in the foils, I thought, you know what? This would be a really good thing to document in my coronavirus traveler's notebook because this was kind of a big deal. And you guys, it was, I mean, I put it off as long as I could. Well, I could have, you know, I guess that's not really true because I could have put it off for a long time, but um, I put it off for a long time and then thought, you know what? I'm ready to do this. So I thought this would be a really good thing to document. And not only is it a good thing to document because I can tell the story about um, how I went for so long without coloring my hair, but it also, the mask, right? Because I've never been at a hair appointment and had a mask on. So I thought that'd be kind of a fun little story to document in my traveler's notebook. All right, so I already printed that photo out ahead of time. And I have, um, I talk about this printer all the time, you guys, that's the Epson Picture Mate PM400 uh, that I have linked in the description of the video um, that prints three and a half by fives, five by sevens, four by six, and it is super portable. So actually when I was at the lake, I actually printed a bunch of these photos. So that was kind of cool uh, because I didn't have time to do a ton of planning before I left. All right. So then the the um, the product that I am going to use for this spread is from my friend Andrea Bethke. And um, she does really neat, she's just a, such a neat person. Um, she is a, a very much a Disney aficionado and um, kind of dresses the part and just has a really neat story. Anyhow, she came up with a collection that's called Together Apart. And um, she saw that I'd been kind of doing a lot of documenting in my traveler's notebook about coronavirus. And she said, hey, can I send you this to play with? And I said, oh well, yeah, of course, I would love to play. So as I was starting to think about what type of products that I wanted to use for this spread, this kind of jumped out at me. So I am starting with my photo and uh, things are a little bit, well, you guys know I'm not in my normal environment. So I'm going to start with my photo. And this one is, let's see, I don't think I, let's see if I brought my ruler. No little ruler with me. There's my trimmer. So this photo is four by four. The Traveler's Notebook that I'm using, this is a standard wide, so it's five inches wide. That gives me a little bit more room so my photo can be a little bit bigger. So I'm using that four by four photo. Oh, and then this is interesting, you guys. I might have to stand up because I'm so used when I craft, I, um, I 
work standing up. So it's hard for me to get a good perspective if I'm sitting down. So there's my photo. Um, the reason that I wanted to use this collection, she has all kinds of face masks and different things about um, quarantining or sheltering in place, kind of all of that that really is a lot about this little photo. So there's some really fun hearts here. Just going through some of, I have not looked at, I have not started to look through this pack yet. So let's see, isn't that funny? Look at my precious and it's a little roll of toilet paper. Cherries are cute. I always tend to gravitate towards the ice cream, don't I? Uh, house, that, that's cute. Look, at, isn't she cute with her pink hair? Oh, you know what? I think that, because I'm gonna use some of that rainbow paper, I think. So you guys, and this is this is really what I do. Um, this is no different. This is like you guys are at home with me and I'm sitting down going, okay, I know what photo I wanna use, now what do I use? And I just start going through things and things just start to jump out at you sometimes, right? You see things and they jump out and you think that would work. This paper I loved and what I thought would be fun to do with this paper is I think I'm gonna cut it down and have it be the right side of my spread. So I tried, um, this was funny, I used the trimmer on the bed earlier and just note to self, trimmers on beds don't work very well because um, you don't get a very straight cut, you kind of get a jagged cut. So um, I've tried that for you now and now you know not to do that. Okay, so I know my traveler's notebook is eight and a quarter tall. So I'm gonna come in and trim that at eight and a quarter. Mm, all right, I actually, I know I want more of the cloud. So I'm gonna come in and actually get more of the cloud and then I'll trim some off of the top. Uh oh, did I see Tracy? I'm seeing something that says, um, I hope it all goes well. Um, you're feeling better. Oh, okay, good. Well, not good. Not good, Tracy, that your husband had to have surgery. Um, I just was worried maybe you had coronavirus. So none of us want that, right? We just cross our fingers and hope that for the best. All right, so here we go. We're going to trim this right about, I think right here. So I can get a little of that cloud because I want part of the cloud with the rainbow. So now it's going to be too tall. I need to come in and trim it to 8.25 because 8.25 is the height of the insert that I use. And that is called a standard, um, well, the one I use is called the standard wide. I am using a trimmer that I, well, a borrowed trimmer, so um, just figuring it out. Okay, and now I know I need it to be five inches wide. So that's fun. That way I'll be able to have a good portion of that rainbow. So loved the paper, but that paper was way too big, right? That wasn't gonna work in my traveler's notebook. So then we just figured out how can we cut it to still make it work for us. All right, so we'll come in here with our taper and when I am adhering uh, the pattern paper into my traveler's notebook instead of going down like this generally what I'll do is I'll put it over on this side and then turn the page onto it that way uh oh well normally that way there we go um, I get a nice, it adheres exactly where I want it to. Then I'm going to come in with my corner rounder. You guys should see all the stuff I brought with me. Um, and I also shipped things because I shipped a bunch of stuff that I was, um, that I'll be teaching with uh, here at the retreat. But I also brought a bunch of stuff with me, which is kind of crazy. Um, okay, and I probably didn't follow my own advice as well as I should have. Um, I told you guys that sometimes more is not necessarily better, right? And um, when we are traveling with our crafting products, 
that we need to try our best to limit what we take or else um, not only do you have to pack an extra suitcase, but it makes things a little overwhelming when you get there. All right, so there's that half, and I'm gonna come in and just do my little outlining here, and this is just a little technique that I do with my little Sharpie pen. What's interesting now is I'm standing up. I have some lower back issues, and when you are standing up, and I stand at a, a counter, um, counter height in my office in my craft room at home. This is not counter height. This is desk height. So we may have to forego the perspective of working above for our back. Okay, so let's see. Let's see now what to do. A lot of times I will do that. I will take a piece of pattern paper and just have it be one side of my spread. And a lot of us have lots and lots and lots of pattern paper, you guys, right? So if you have pattern paper and you haven't been working it into your traveler's notebooks, or if you are new to traveler's notebooks and you're new to kind of documenting in your traveler's notebooks, basically, especially those of you that are here um, at the retreat for Camp Lake Lottawashi, um, we're basically scrapbooking, right? And we have lots and lots and lots of pattern paper. So we are just going to um, cut our paper down to size a little bit to work with. All right, so let's see what else we have. So I had initially pulled out this guy, but I think now that I have the rainbow over here, that's a lot of rainbows. So um, we will use that for something else. Um, let's see, I like that. I might figure out a place to use that. That's gonna be too big, I think, and we're not home there, so I don't need home. Um, I could use safe. You know what? Actually, I think safe could work really well here because in my journaling, I'm going to talk about how I waited so long to um, to have my hair colored, but um, I'm doing it in a safe environment. So I think that's going to work really well right there. I am going to use my little glue pen because it's a little bit harder to get my adhesive behind because it's a little die cut. Make sure as I'm working here that you guys can see. Okay, good. And I want that to be a little bit on my photo, just because I like to put things on my photos. Robin, you have two nieces recovering. Oh gosh. Oh, an RN, oh. So that's probably where she got it, I bet, huh? Bless your niece's heart, that's the RN. Oh gosh, those um, essential workers are, well, essential workers, any essential workers, right? Not just um, not just nurses and doctors and medical personnel, really, you know, the people that work at the post office, anybody that is essential to our, you know, our world continuing to function is, um, is essential. Uh, did, you, know, you guys, oh, so line of paper, Beth, this is from um, Andrea Bethke. Um, oh, here we go. It's Andrea, A-N-D-R-E-A-B-E-T-H-K-E.com. And I will link to this uh, when we're done with the video. I just didn't have a chance. Um, I didn't have a chance to do that as I was kind of crazy trying to get ready to get out of town. All right, so there we are safe. Um, the stickers. I think I'm going to pull this little COVID-19 off and use that guy. Um, they are pretty skinny so i'm going to use my little tweezers to help it's fun um, for those of you that have pets and pets are a big part of our staying at home um, there's a lot of fun pets in this line well your standard pets like your cat and dog um i saw something or i heard something very interesting um the other day about pets and COVID. That um, as people are going back to work and maybe starting to resume some of their everyday, act, or um, leaving the house and maybe working outside of the home. Um, I think, um, Joanne, online. Oh, and Rosalinda, yes, you know what? I have a Zyron sticker maker, um, which yes, that would have made it a lot easier if I had thought to bring that, right? Um, 
Oh, anyhow, that you have to think about your pets now because your pets are used to you being home if you've been home a lot. And so you kind of have to think about maybe helping them to transition as you are going back to work or, you know, leaving the house way more often than you had been in the past. You guys, that looks like Poe. That looks like our cat Poe. Although, um, when I get home on the next class, I'm going to have to show you Poe. I'll take a picture and show you guys. Um, Poe is a long-haired cat, and uh, we had him shaved. We have to have him shaved every summer because he um, is does not groom himself very well. He has so much hair, and so he is shaved. But, um, yeah, anyhow, it's pretty cute, but he looks a little interesting. Um, all right, let's see. Oh, yeah, no, we won't use that cat, but I think the cat is going to be great for... I'll have to do a I'll have to do a memory keeping spread about Poe and his little shaved um, his uh, his little shaved picture. All right, so just going through things, seeing what I want to use. These little hearts sure are cute, so I think we need to get some little heart in here somewhere. Maybe in there. I need to add my washi because you guys know how much I love my washi. And I, well, let's see, maybe yellow. I think we need, might need to pull some yellow in. Let's try this pink and see what this pink looks like. I think the pink will be nice there because, oh, rip it first. The pink may be nice there because it is, pulls in a little bit of pink from the other side. Oh, you know what I just realized I don't have? I don't have my little garbage, um, my little garbage with me. So my little garbage container. Well, this room's going to be fun to clean up when I'm done. I did put the little do not disturb sign on the door. And I think the little dis do not disturb sign is going to have to be on my door all weekend because anyone that would come into this room would probably be like, uh, and actually, you know, what's interesting. I don't know. Um, I don't know if they are actually coming into rooms right now. When we went to California the two times to go get my dad and move him, um, they were not um, they were not cleaning rooms during coronavirus, which I was totally fine with. I think it's probably better that, you know, for, for them, essential workers, and um, for us, that if you're staying in a hotel, maybe better that they don't, um, that they're not, you know, coming into your room. Uh, so they don't get anything you might have and you don't get anything they might have. All right, so just add a little washi there and I pulled the black in because even though the numbers don't really have to do with anything, although what I could do, I could tie into my journaling how many weeks it had been since I'd actually had my hair done the numbers would kind of tie in. But that's just more decorative because I have black there and black there. I wanted to kind of do my visual triangle. So I have kind of a visual triangle going on there with those three pieces. Um, okay, so I, oh, well, I always try, sometimes I forget, you guys know that, to date things. Um, when I am doing my memory keeping, I want to make sure to date things so I know when this was. So I'm going to use a roller date stamp here, and this is May, it was May 13th, May 1-3. Uh, okay, and oh, now let's see if that ended up in my bag. You guys know I always like to test stamp first, right? So, where's my little, nope, my little scratch paper did not make it. So, this piece of cardstock will now be my scratch paper. And you guys, this is just a little, I, this is one of those that you learn along the way. I always try to stamp, test something first. Number one, to make sure I get good coverage. Number two, to make sure that things are right side up and not upside down when I am stamping. Um, but number three, and this has happened before, as I did a test, test stamp, I wasn't paying attention and a couple of you guys are in the comments are saying, wrong date, wrong date, wrong date, wrong date. And finally I looked up in the comments and I saw her in the chat and noticed it was the wrong date. So, all right, that is going to work and that is 513. And so here I need to stand up because if I don't stand up, I won't get a good angle on that. All right. So now I can go about doing my journaling. One thing I did not bring with me, um, a couple weeks back, I think it's been three weeks back now. I did a video, a Saturday video on 
how I prepare to go on a trip and how I pack things and what I pack and when I pack them in when I am preparing to craft on a trip like I am here. So um, if you have a trip coming up or are interested in that, you can go back a couple videos back and find that video. One of the things that um, I usually like to bring with me are my colored pencils. And I did not pare down my colored pencils to bring with me. So um, I know what I'm going to do. And when I get home, I will um, add this little part. I'm going to frame in what's going to be my journaling or what I'm writing about here. And then I will come back in and outline that area with a colored pencil. So what I mean by that, let's see. Um, I'm looking in my giant mess of things here just so I can show you what that looks like. Where's my little traveler's notebook? For my lists, it's here. Let's see if I did it in this one. Oh, here it is. <laughs> you guys, excuse me while I grab this. All right. So I will come in with a okay with colored pencil. So I outlined with black and then outlined, oopsie. There we go. Outlined with black and then outlined, pressed really hard with my color pencil to get the dark yellow in that case, and then just barely color that in. So um, it just gives it a little bit of a, a little bit more of a decorative touch. Um, and then it also helps to pull some color in, especially if you're not using like colored pens or something like that to do your journaling or your titles. Okay, so, um, what I would do normally if I wasn't filming, I would go into my calendar and I would look to see when my last hair appointment was prior to this. Um, but my phone is up there, so um, I can't do that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to say, I'm grabbing one of my sticker tablets and I think I don't want to use black because there's going to be a lot of black there and you guys this is just this is exactly what I would be doing if I was working by myself I'm running through different options and scenarios in my head of what I would use and I think I might want to do some yellow there so I'm just looking for a number that's all a number sticker so um we're going to pretend. We're going to pretend that it is nine. And I am just barely gonna stick this down because I will be able to then come back in and really put however many weeks it had been. So I don't know right now how many weeks it had been, but I'll come back in and add it. Nine weeks since. And I'm just telling a story here. Since my last hair appointment, that's a long time um, as far, and I'm just writing as far as roots go. And I'm emphasizing roots there, so I just outlined that little um, that little box. Um, as I am writing, I I'm just writing. I haven't really thought about what I'm going to say, and sometimes that works, and sometimes it doesn't. Because sometimes you want to tell a story, and then you're writing, and you realize all of a sudden you don't have enough room. So it might help to kind of have an idea what you want to write about ahead of time. I mean, I know what I want to write about. Um, other times, sometimes things will just stop um, or I wind them down really quickly. So an option, if that's happening in your writing and you find that you have a longer story that you want to tell or you don't have enough room, what you can do is um, something like, 
Let me find that. Well, there's kind of two options where I did this. You can add um, a tip in or I don't think I have a little tip in to show you. This is kind of like a tip in, but basically what I did here, I just took a three by four card, scored it up at the top, put adhesive behind that scored edge, and then adhered it to my page. And then I had lots of room here to do journaling. So I could, if I needed to, I could potentially put another card here and have it lift up, or I could put a card in the center like, this one. So here I had no room for journaling. So I just took a card and I could use whatever size card that I needed. I could take a card and you just put washi on part of the card and washi on the page of your notebook, your insert, and the same thing on the back. So you kind of are tipping in a card like that so you have room for more journaling. Anyhow, I'll be okay because there's really not a lot to talk about. But um, so nine weeks since my last hair appointment, that's a long time as far as roots go. Um, Let's see, um, with, and Danita's the name of the lady that's done my hair forever, with Danita and her one chair salon, um, along with, the first appointment of the day. And two masks, because we both had masks. It was all good. And I'm gonna say, and much needed, right? It was much needed. Okay, there, so um, that works. That's enough there to jog my memory. So when I am, um, when I'm documenting, when I'm memory keeping in my traveler's notebooks, depending on how many details I want to remember, if I'm traveling and I'm going, let's say to Europe, there are maybe a lot of details I want to remember. Maybe I'm going to a castle and I want to document the history behind that castle. I know there's no way that I will remember that later. So I might include a little bit more detail on something like this. But this is just for to help me remember kind of that feeling. And oh my gosh, that's right. We couldn't do things like have our hair done or have our nails done or, um, you know, something like that. So enough for me to remember oh yeah, the reason that I felt okay doing it when I did was because of those things, okay? Uh, but here definitely, you guys, the picture tells the story, right? I mean, yeah, you don't often uh, probably document photos of yourself where you're, um, you know, have the foils in your hair sitting under the, the, heat, the heat thing. Um, mm, Mariana, yes, watercolor pencils and a water brush. Um, I have done that too. I have done that too, because a lot of times, especially if you're working with watercolors, you can um, kind of make your own colors too by mixing. Um, let's see. The alpha sticker books. Um, yeah, these alpha sticker books, and I've talked a lot about these, you guys. These are definitely my go-to. Um, simple stories, they, um, this is just such a good because you end up with so many different colors, and then you have three different, well, actually, one, two, three, right, three different um, fonts and three different sizes per color. Anyhow, and I carry those in my store um, online and I've linked to those as well. All right, so um, let's see what else I'm going to do here. That's my little placeholder. What else do I want to add? And this is just kind of, you guys, a lot of times, it is kind of like that there. It is coming back and moving things around and seeing what what goes? Um, depending on what I'm doing, it kind of depends on my mood. Some days I like a single page uh, layout, if you will, in my traveler's notebook, just because it is, um, you know, I might not have that much I want to talk about. I just want to kind of get it down. And so um, in this, normally this is a don't do what I say, not as I do. Um, I should have waited to put this down. Um, until I was sure that I wanted it to go there, the COVID. Well, I knew I wanted it to go there, but I didn't really think about maybe wanting to put something underneath it. So that works. Um, okay, what was I saying now? Totally got distracted. 
talking to myself, but um, I like it when I'm teaching um, with you guys here because I'm really not talking to myself because you guys are here with me. Uh, if, if someone's walking down the hall, they definitely think I'm talking to myself. But that's okay. All right. So let's see what else we want to have here. Now, I know that's not, yeah, I better not put home there because um, that might get a little confusing if I put home because I'm really not home. Um, a lot of times I don't get too tied up in what things say, but home um, could definitely be consu consuming, confusing. <gasps> okay, look it. So uh, beforehand I had pulled these little cherries and I know I definitely need to use the cherries because guess what, you guys, the cherries. Um, my mask has cherries on it. Uh, someone is asking about these little stickers. Denise, I will come in and link. This is a collection that I'm using um, from Andrea Bethke. So I will um, I will link to the collection when I'm done. Um, I just didn't have time to do it ahead of time. These little guys, uh, those little epoxy hearts from Doodlebug. I love, love, love. So I know these need to work in as well. The cherries need to work in. Uh, let's see where the cherries are going to go. cherries could work in there. I don't want to put them up here because I already have a lot going on up here so it'd be kind of too much happening here on the left hand side. We just move them around a bit. I don't want them here. They're kind of weird up there in the sky so yep that's where they're going to go. They're going to go right down there in that little corner. So um, other than the cherries anything I'm using really doesn't have to do with the photo right? Um, but the cherries just kind of work for that. Come on, little cherries. All right, there we go. Curious to see if Nick is still on. You guys, I'm pretty sure we've lost both Nick and Sam um, because uh, Nick is at the lake, so I'm sure he's enjoying the lake. I mean, he just did his, I didn't ask him to. He was very nice to hop in. And then Sam, you know Sam, He's he got his brownie points for the day, so he's in and out, I'm sure. But that's good. All right, so let's see. I think I might do a few little hearts, maybe right around here. So, dee dee dee. And these hearts are great because they're so small um, and they kind of, oh, I better put that over the side just because I might have a double digit week. So I'm somehow thinking it's double digit weeks. Um, just a good little accent. And the nice thing too, I don't often, when I'm working in my traveler's notebooks, use things that are dimensional. Um, I don't often do things that are dimensional because, hmm, not sure what is happening there with the, all the little dots. Anyhow, um, because it makes it hard sometimes to work on things that are underneath it. Sue, so enjoy your walk. Lauren, um, I'm sure you are in a place that you don't intend to be. If you wouldn't mind um, leaving the chat, because I'm not sure what um, what you are doing, and you're a little bit distracting, hun. So we are going to do that and see if that works. Uh, all right, friends. We're going to see if that helps us. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see what else we might want to put here. I think I need one more little heart here. And then I am going to call this spread good. Uh, sometimes I come back in after the fact and add a few more things to it. Oh, actually, I know I do need to add something to it because I want to add one of my word strip stickers. And... Um, you guys know how much I like my word strip stickers. So they are, excuse me, while I reach over to this other stack. Uh, all right. We'll see if we're going to do regular or snarky. I mean, maybe a snarky one would, would come into play here. Um, you guys, I've talked about these word strip stickers a lot, and they're kind of my go-to, any kind of word strip sticker, really. Um... 
these are funny, the snarky ones. And these are um, on reorder. I have, um, I have more coming. I'm sorry, and by sorry, I mean get over it. Uh, excuse me, here is your nose. I found it in my business. In my defense, I was left unsupervised. I'm sorry, did I roll my eyes out loud? So those are fun. Then I also do the regular ones. So let's see. Um, how about this? When nothing is sure, everything is possible. That's kind of a good one. That's with everything that is happening right now with all of this. So we know it's too long. I'm going to come in and just trim that right there. When nothing is sure, everything is possible. All right. So that's it for now. I may end up coming in and um, doing adding a little bit more because you guys know sometimes I add a little bit more because sometimes you just need to walk away and that is okay. Um, you have permission to walk away from whatever you're working on because sometimes we just get in a rut, right? We just kind of move things around and we're really not feeling it. And sometimes if we walk away and come back, then we get a different perspective. So I'm going to call that one good and I'm going to move all of these little guys off to the side just so I can clean up and we're going to work on another one. Um, as I am picking up, um, I'll talk a little bit about the next one that we are going to do. Um, it's going to be another double, double page spread in my Coronavirus Traveler's Notebook. And then after that, we'll do one more that is not in my Coronavirus Traveler's Notebook. But um, it's a really good tip that we'll talk about on what to do if you're documenting and you're not sure where where you want to put it or what traveler's notebook you even want to put it in because there's a really easy way to handle thank you um country hobby i appreciate that um kelly this guy um, I will link. I don't carry these in my shop. I think that's what you're talking about for the stamping. I don't carry those in my shop, but I, um, I will link to it in the video when we're done. Um, okay. So that one's done. The next one, um, we're just going to push all of this off to the side and hope that the maid does not come in at some point. Maid. And that's where I have to say, if you're just joining, I am not at my house um, the maid is not coming to my house. Uh, I wish, because it, it's quite the mess, especially since we've been gone and Sam's been home. I'm sure it's quite the mess. Anyhow, um, I'm in a hotel, so I don't want her. She'll be walk, walk in and take one look and turn around and leave again. Okay, so the next one. The next one, this is also going into my coronavirus traveler notebook, and it really kind of has nothing to do with coronavirus. But the reason it's going in my coronavirus traveler's notebook um, in the month of May, I, 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 and I don't remember what day it was, so I'm going to have to add that later. In the month of May, Sam and I, so Sam, um, our younger son and I drove to California about nine hours to see my dad. Um, his wife had passed away a couple weeks prior to that, and he was having a hard, really hard time, of course. Um, but with coronavirus, it just makes things, you know, it amplifies, magnifies everything so much. So um, our older son, Jack, who lives in um, Tacoma, Washington, drove down and met us. And so um, this I am documenting a little part of our road trip that Sam and I took. Um, so it's going to go in my traveler's notebook for coronavirus um, because it's something that we did during the time. I know this was towards the end of May. Um, Wanda, I do not. Um, there, I will link to them when um, I'm done with the video so you can see um, where to get those because they're really fun, aren't they? The coronavirus, um, all those little coronavirus stickers and papers I was working with. Um, Noemi, you're going to Zion. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is a little bit of a squirrel moment, you guys. Um, I live in Utah. I live in northern-ish Utah, so um, Salt Lake area, suburb of Salt Lake. Uh, southern Utah, and I think this is kind of a little known fact. I don't know. If you kind of live in the area, surrounding states, you may know. Um, southern Utah 
has six or seven national parks. Um, Roxanne, I am, I am in a suburb of Salt Lake called Cottonwood Heights. Beth, your son lives in Salt Lake. Seven Magic Mountains. Yes, Maddie, that's exactly what that is. So here's our squirrel for a minute while I'm squirreling. Anyhow, um, six or seven different national parks in Southern Utah. You guys, it is the most amazingly beautiful place um, really on the planet. So, so, so many different, um, different things to see. So we drove down I-15 through Vegas and I had always wanted to see this, you guys. This is called Seven Magic Mountains and it is located south, no, I th south west of Las Vegas. Um, and that trip was such a blur. I don't even remember, um, how far. If you Google Seven Magic Mountains, if you're ever in that area, um, basically the Seven Magic Mountains are these rock structures. So right here, all of those rocks, those are stacked rocks and it may be really hard to see, but, um, you can see like the little people, the, the little people, the real people, um, the real people are, Oh my gosh, like maybe one fifth the size of those rock structures. So very, very, very cool. And it's just out in the desert. Um, there were lots of people there. We didn't go near the people. We stopped um, kind of off the side of the road and did a little selfie. Anyhow, so part of our road trip that I wanted to document. So this guy, this I printed, well, all of the photos that I am using, I have printed out on the Epson Picture Mate. Um, this little guy, this little workhorse. So um, I'll just scoot that in a little bit and you can see. It's definitely portable. I mean, I brought it with me. It is maybe 10 inches wide by, uh, I don't know, maybe eight tall and maybe three high. Um, anyhow, it uh, works off of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth through your phone or your computer or whatever it is, but I use it through my phone. And the best thing about it is it has a free app that you can use on your phone called, I think it is the, mm, 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 mm. Um, I'm not even remembering what it is now. I will link to it when we're done. Um, but anyhow, the app has pre-configured templates or pre-configured collages. So basically all I did is I went in and I said, ooh, this was a template without the photos. Basically, you could do three horizontals on a four by six. And so I, um, you open up the app and you just basically move the photos from your camera on your phone into those spots. So um, that's just a regular four by six. That had the three, um, whatever size that is. This one, you could do a four by four and a little smaller one there. Uh, this one I love because this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And those are all just doing, thank you, Noemi, the Epson Creative Print app. Those are all just doing um, using the app. So I use Photoshop a lot when I'm at home to kind of do this with my photos, but the app is so, so, so easy. So this was really easy for me to work with just um, on the road. And it has all those pre-configured templates. That I have linked to that printer in the description of the video. Noemi, I do. I print on the five by seven paper all of the time. In fact, um, oh, you know what? I don't have my first coronavirus traveler's notebook with me. Actually, what I will show you though, um, because I have a photo. Let me crawl over the bed really quick. Oh, I don't have to crawl over the bed. It's right here. Maybe, was that it? Hang on, let me measure. Let me measure just to be sure. Okay, yes. Um, this was a photo of, I have several of them. This was a photo of Sam in the kitchen uh, making granola early, early, early on in coronavirus. So that is the five by seven just printed out from that same printer. And that white border, no white border. And that is with the app, you have that option. You can tell it whether you want it to print with the white border or print with no border. And I generally like to print with the white borders. So, cause that's kind of fun. Um, but yes, I do use the five by seven. Uh, quite a bit. Okay. Um, so our trip. Now, when I printed this, I wasn't sure if I would use this together as one 
four by six photo, or if I might want to, um, if I might want to cut it apart, but I think I might as well use that as one photo. Um, this picture down here, uh, this is not my photo. This was a photo that I grabbed off of Google because I wanted a really nice, crisp, up close photo without having all the people behind it. So, um, those two, I'm going to keep together. But again, an example of where, you know, maybe I'm in Paris and maybe I'm trying to get an incredible picture of the Eiffel Tower and I'm never going to get as great of a picture sitting in front of the Eiffel Tower as I can get as some professional photographer has on Google. So I just search Eiffel Tower, right click on it, save it, print it from um, my, my phone. Um, so yes, I'm going to keep those together. Somebody just asked a question about... Um, how long have you been using that print ink last on the images? I worry about those digi photos, darker printers. Okay, so um, Mariana, as with, I think, any at-home printer. So with any at-home printer, uh, the photo paper that I use, um, I use some that's Canon and I use some that's Epson. As long as you are using photo paper, um, the paper, between the paper and the ink, this should be archival quality, meaning it should last um, lots of years. Now I say lots of years because I think nobody really knows. I mean, I know they can go in and perform tests and say that this should last a hundred years, um, but we don't know. So if that is something that you are concerned about, I use a printer like this because it's very easy for me to use on the go and it's portable. And I don't necessarily have to plan things too far in advance. Um, if that is something that you're definitely concerned about, I would recommend Persnickety Prints. So persnicketyprints.com and they do darkroom processing. So um, they, and it's, it's, it's very technical and I can't even pretend to understand it or explain it. Um, I just know Shari and I know um, her business and they do an amazing job. So um, look into persnicketyprints.com. Yes, Mandy, impossible to get a pic of them without the people. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, so I'm gonna use this. So I know I wanna use this here somewhere. And then I also had these photos of the little signs as we were driving. So these are welcome to state signs. So we started in Utah. When you were traveling to Southern California from Utah on I-15, you first go through Arizona. Then you go through Nevada. Then you go through California. Um, these were all taken. I was not driving. Sam was driving. Uh, so it was okay. And all of these were speeding down the road. And I just, as I knew we were getting close, I just kept taking photo, 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 photo with my phone. Out The, the windows were even rolled up. It was too darn hot. I mean, we're in um, May. It was like over 100 in that area. So too darn hot and I just snapped those out the window. Now here's the thing, if you have already taken a trip and you think it might be fun to do something like this to capture the different state signs um, as you're traveling across the borders, again, Google, you'll find those all over Google. So if you um, want to go back and document something and you don't have that, you can find those on Google um, if you don't have the opportunity to take them. Or sometimes you only get half of a sign because you're just going too fast or something is blurry. So those I actually printed on, I pre-printed on a four by six like this. And the template that I picked was like that, that one. So it had little four of these little photos here. Um, and then I just didn't print anything there and then cut them out. You can pull a shot from a video. Yes, you can. Yes, yes, yes. I'm missing all kinds of different um, comments here. Oh, Debbie, that sounds neat. You blew them up into a canvas. I bet that looks really cool. Okay, so Arizona, then Nevada, then this. All right, so we have this here. Um, where are my little things I set off to the side that I wanted to use here? So I pulled some of these things right there. And I pulled from this pack. This is the Everyday Musings Ephemera pack. And I have linked to that. There's lots of really good, um, lots of good little die cuts there. I'm going to use some on this one and then some on my next one as well. 
this little adventure, and then I'm pulling in these Wander stickers that I used some of last week. Oh, look it, perfect, Famous Landmark. And you know what's so good about that? That Famous Landmark has the blue, and there's the blue in all of this, so that will work really well. Um, all right, so let's see. I might put that right there. I'm looking at what I have. This is what you guys can't see. Um, I'm looking at what I have, looking across my table, looking across the bed, looking across the room to see what I might want to work with. So here I need a title. Um, let's see. Looking through some stamps that I brought. Um, these, you guys, new, care. look at that, new Carrie Bradford stamps. Giant, that's a six by eight sheet. So giant, giant, giant. So I have some, ah. So this one, this one is definitely me just on the fly, you guys, because I didn't do a ton of planning on this and what, what I wanted to use with the exception of, um, with the exception of, those photos. Let's see, I think if this comes up here, adventure, and down here, I'm gonna see what happens if I spell road trip. Um, so, I'm gonna grab that, my stamping block. These are the Juniper Small from Carrie Bradford. I did not um, link Carrie either. So um, it's just carriebradford.com and I will come back and link those when we are done as well. You guys know how much I love Carrie and her stamps. So as I'm pulling stamps off, you guys, oh gosh, this is funny. I started to pull the K off like I was spelling Carrie. I don't wanna do that. I need to spell road trip. Yeah, that would be funny. Not so much, but okay. Um, as I, let's see, I have to think about this for a second. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do two together. They won't. Okay, let's see if we're going to fit. R, no, I don't even remember what I was saying. Squirrel, R, O, A, So I could use um, my alpha stickers, but here's the thing about my alpha stickers right now, you guys, actually, let's put this here. This will be a lot easier. Um, this stamping block I'm using has little grids on it and it makes it really easy to line up where I'm stamping. So I'm gonna take advantage of those grids. R-O-A-D, a little crooked there. Um, so I use letter stickers a lot, right? We know that, um, but sometimes your letter stickers aren't the right size for what you want to, the space that you want to fill. So I want something that's much taller here for road trip. So that's why I'm going to use my little, um, these little stamps because they are taller. They're tall and skinny, just like I want to be. I want to be tall and skinny. Well, I'm tall, but the skinny part's missing, but that's okay. Isn't it funny how the older that we get, we just kind of, some of those things just aren't as important anymore. Well, the healthy part is important. The skinny part is not. All right, here we go, road. Okay, that looks good. Now let's see if, oh, you guys can't see that as I'm trying to look at it. I'm gonna see if I can fit trip there because it'd be really nice if I could um, just fit all of these together. I just had a thought. Um, there is someone that had commented yesterday on, yesterday, Friday, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, on my Instagram post about this video or about this class. And she had said that she was just getting ready to start um, like a hiking, she was going to start doing a lot of hikes and she was looking for a way to document them maybe in a traveler's notebook. And I don't know what made me just think this right now. Um, as we are talking about memory keeping, 
if you are documenting something that is repetitive, so maybe you're taking a lot of road trips or you want to document all of the traveling that you're doing if you're if you're let's say you're driving and you want to come up with a format that you could continue to use for every trip to lend some kind of consistency maybe you're um traveling across the country and you want to document the different road signs as you are traveling from state to state uh, it makes it really really easy if you come up with a template or a format and then you just use that along the way because your photos are what's changing your photos are what's helping you tell the story the format is helping to pull it all together now i'm definitely not doing that here because this is just one road trip however i did um i started at the beginning of this year so beginning of 2020 when i was still traveling because uh, normally i travel a lot i travel and teach quite a bit Excuse me, I um, was taking photos, I've always loved to do this, but take photos out the plane window. And then I was kind of documenting that. So I came up with a format that I was using the exact same format for every flight. And it was the photos that were changing, the photos that were telling the story. So um, I have a video here, I think, I think I did a video, you guys. You know what? Um, now I need to, I'm not Okay, total squirrel moment. I don't know if I did. I know I posted it on, um, I know I posted it on Instagram. So you know what, news at 11. If I haven't done a video about that, I will do a video about that because I think it could be um, super interesting to see what I did. Anyhow, um, so I just, so let's see, Debbie, how do you decide what stories, adventures are documented in a Trevor's Notebook and which actually go in a scrapbook? So Debbie, that's a very interesting question. For me, I document all of it in a traveler's notebook. Um, I do a little bit of 12 by 12 scrapbooking too. I still teach 12 by 12 scrapbooking classes and I have 12 by 12 scrapbooking kits. But for me, as I'm documenting, the traveler's notebook um, is probably more my personal style. So that's where I'm documenting. Um, I'd be curious, though, to kind of throw that uh, question out to other people that are watching. So if you are documenting in both a traveler's notebook and you're also documenting in a kind of traditional 12 by 12 scrapbook, how do you decide what um, what you're doing? Um, Debbie, if I was documenting a lot in both, I think probably the way that I would answer that if um, to me, a traveler's notebook is kind of like a mini book and I still do a lot of documenting in mini books as well. So if I am telling kind of a story that maybe has a beginning and an end to it, so coronavirus has a beginning and an end. Um, if I was trying to document something like that, that entire kind of situation and everything that was going on in a 12 by 12 scrapbook, that would start to get really big and bulky. So for me, that would be, for me personally, um, a traveler's notebook might be more well suited to that. If I want to kind of work on the road like this, traveler's notebooks are a little bit um, a more transportable format for me to work with. Um, so that's probably, that's that would probably be how I would determine or differentiate um, let's see what everyone's saying. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, there we go, Mandy, perfect. You do the Traveler's Notebook to document the days of the trip and the 12 by 12 to highlight a picture or moment. That makes absolute sense. Um, so more showcasing things in a 12 by 12 and then um, really telling the story or the day to day of the trip, maybe in a Traveler's Notebook. The nice thing about that too is that you could literally take your insert with you like this. I could take my insert with me. It'd be very easy to throw in a suitcase or throw in a bag and then maybe take a pen and some stickers and just do my documenting day by day as I go. Especially if I have a little pocket printer with me, I could even, um, you know, print out my little photos while I'm traveling and add those if I didn't want to take my big, my big printer. All right, so road trip. What I did here, you guys will notice, um, I did not have two R's, right? You wouldn't expect a stamp set to have two R's. So I know I need, um, I know I need the second R. So what I do when this happens, I would come in and I would, um, uh, stamp it just like this with my space in between for the R. And then I will come back, take all the rest of the, put the R here, take all the rest of the stamps off and then just stamp the R. But before I do that, I need to come in and make sure that I've left the spacing 
for the R. I don't want too much and I wanna make sure that I have enough. So I actually have a little bit too much there in terms of how I've been spacing my letters. So let's see. Now some stamp sets will have more than one R if they're smaller and they're trying to fill up the sheet. Sometimes you do have more, well, more than one R. You have more than one letter, right? Actually, let's move our P over a little bit. I like when I stamp, I like my letters, and even when I place my alpha stickers, I like them to be a little bit closer together. Um, the other thing, um, back Debbie to your question, how do you decide which and which? If I wanna document a lot about a particular area, so uh, maybe I'm going to England or Scotland and I'm looking at a lot of different castles, um, if I want to capture that information, a little bit of the history about the castle, in that case, I could have a castle here, and then I could do some journaling about the castle. I might even grab a brochure and cut up parts of the brochure and add it. Um, but to me, something like that is more suited than a traveler's notebook, as opposed to doing that in a 12 by 12 layout and then trying to capture all of the words, the history of the castle. That's a little bit harder to do for me in a 12 by 12. This format's a little bit more suited to that. Okay, so now what I need to do, I have my ode trip. I'm gonna keep the R uh, where I placed it in the second spot because that's going to be um, easier to come in and put my R back in the first spot. So now I need my little scrap paper again. And again, this is where I always want to do, I always test first, but in this case, I need to prime first. These are brand new stamps. Thank you, Colleen. These are brand new stamps. And so they've never been stamped before. I need to prime them. And so when I prime them, I will try to get them inked up really well. Let's try not to, let's see if that's the only, I probably threw in, let me see in my stamping. Yeah, all right. So I just threw a stamping, uh, I threw a, an ink pad in, and this ink pad is, it needs to be refreshed. It is not going to work as well for us as I want because I can already see it's not going to be, um, it's not going to have good solid coverage, and I like my stamps to have good solid coverage. So, ode trip. But that's actually going to be okay because I can, I'll teach you a little trick. This is why I mostly use black ink when I stamp, because then this little trick works. Make sure I spelled that right, right? Have you ever done that where you, um, if you do it with stickers, it's a little bit easier to fix, but if you're doing it with, uh, if you are doing it with stamps and you spell something wrong, I hate that. All right, so someone was asking about this earlier. When I stamp in my traveler's notebook, I use this, um, this little grid stamping block. And I use this because I put it behind whatever I want to stamp on. Now let me make sure that it's not going to, whoopsie. Yeah, don't do that. Don't um, leave your ink stamp underneath something because it's not going to, am I gonna be okay if I do that? I am. Um, all right, so I like to put that block underneath because then that ensures that I have a really solid flat surface to stamp on. So let's see. That looks like it will be good right about there. Now the table's gonna shake. We'll see if you guys can see it shake. We'll pretend like it's an earthquake, like I'm home and it's an earthquake. You guys, that was so crazy when we had our earthquakes in Utah. Uh, we live on a fault line. Um, in fact, pretty much the entire Wasatch Front is on a fault line. And, um, oh, it just reminds me, I didn't bring anything to clean my stamp with either. Um, the entire Wasatch Front is on a fault line. And let me put my R over here where I need it to go before I pull everything off. And don't worry, I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix that because I don't have a well-inked stamping block. Um, anyhow, we don't, I've lived in Utah for, well, I don't know, since fourth grade. So quite a while, never had an earthquake. And then of course, literally two days after coronavirus really started. So March 18th, we had like a 5.6. And then uh, a month later, we had a pretty good size aftershock. That was a four something. Anyhow, I don't want to joke about earthquakes. When your nerves are already on edge, especially early, early, early days of coronavirus, yeah, 
Oh gosh, you guys, look at what I just did. Dingling. This is what I get when I'm talking and not paying attention. I'll be okay. I pull my R right off. All right, so let's stamp this guy. Oh, and I've got black ink all over me. It's all good. See you guys, we all do it. We all make the same little mistakes, right? Even though we're supposed to know what we're doing. Okay, all right, there we go. So now, some of my letters are not as solid as I want them to be, right? So you guys can see that. You can see that because my ink pad needs more ink that I have see-through letters. And I don't like that. Um, me personally, I don't like to see that. I like to have solid letters. So um, that's when my friend the Sharpie pen comes into play, right? I bring out my Sharpie and I just color in those letters very lightly. Very, very lightly. And I don't get like too crazy that it's not completely solid because nobody has time for that. But I um, will fill in most of it. So I'm gonna fill in half this D and you can see what it looks like once I color it in. Okay, so not colored in on this side of the D, color it in on this side of the D. That's why I use black ink because I have a black Sharpie and it always matches. It always matches. Now, if I was using a Misty, um, I could restamp, and my stamp would be in the exact same place, so it would be in the exact same impression area. However, I didn't bring that with me, and it's not the stamp that's an issue, it's my ink, so that really wouldn't help it. All right, so I'm going to, I'll finish this T, and then I'll stop coloring those in. I'll finish coloring those in later because you guys don't want to watch me color those in. We don't need to do that together. All right. Okay, so road trip. And then this guy's gonna come back into play. Mm, 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 mm. Well, I can already tell I don't like where this is headed. I can just tell. So we'll see what we have to work with. And then that's also when I say, you know what? Not everything has to be a masterpiece, right? Not everything has to be a masterpiece because I'm, I was not centered. Well, I kind of was centered, but not really. So we're gonna end up being here. And now that I see this, I would have rather probably had that be right justified, but that's all right. Because really this is about, I think two important things, not three. The first important thing is documenting, right? Is getting the story told. The second important thing is crafting and having fun, right? The third thing that is not important is whether you love it or not, or what it looks like really when it's done, right? Some of the things that you do you love and other things you think, eh, not so much, but you know what? There's too much to do. There are too many things to craft. So that's when we say, okay, turn the page. And that's also what's nice about a traveler's notebook. You just turn the page. You work on whatever comes next. And that's going to be the example here. So now I'm going to say I wanted to make it look not very good because then I wanted to be able to tell you guys that story. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Just teasing. Just teasing. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, famous landmark. We like this. Famous landmark. Oh, I think this could work right here. Um, it's partially on my photo. And it's not even because I'm not standing up. Partially on the photo, partially on the page. I will put stickers on my photos. Um, for the most part, the scrapbooking products or crafting products that you are working with should be acid and lignin free. So theoretically, and I will say this, theoretically, you do not have to worry about putting a sticker on a photo. Now again, we don't really know. So if that's something that you're really concerned about, then I probably wouldn't put a sticker on my photo. Uh, let's see. Mandy, I missed, I missed you, uh, what you were talking about. Oh, Mandy, I'm so glad. That's good. That is good, good, good. Um, hopefully you're feeling okay. All right. 
Okay, uh, let's see, we have that. And then I think what I'm gonna do, um, I kind of have a smaller, um, I kind of have a smaller thing going on here, right? So if you see over here, I have um, space up at the top, a lot of space over here on the left, and then some space at the bottom. So I think I want these photos to kind of also fit in that same space so that um, it kind of works together as a two page spread. And I am, and I do this a lot, I definitely gravitate towards a grid format. A grid format is safe. It is, um, it is very pleasing to the eye. If you guys said to me, why don't you tilt these photos like this? That, I can't do it. If I left it like that and even told you guys I was going to leave it like that later, I would come back and I'd have to do this. It's just my type A. So grid, I always know grid is safe. It is a safe place for me to be. So, um, but a lot of times, even when I scrapbook 12 by 12 layouts, I a lot of times default to a grid format because it is, it is safe. It's visually pleasing. This guy's a little bit too long for me. So I'm standing up again too. So things can get a little weird. All right, so now I have to make sure again, I have those in the right order because that's part of this. Now, there will be, this will be a longer story. This is, will be the first of several page, several pages spreads about this trip. This was the first trip that we took to, um, to go see my dad. And then a, um, he, while we were there, said, I want to move to Utah. And we said, okay. So then we kind of started getting those plans in place. Now, my dad has early onset uh, dementia. So um, we ended up having to very much fast forward that second planned trip to California to move him. Um, so anyhow, we did this trip, four trips, so two trips back and forth twice to California in about, oh, I don't know, three weeks, but he's good. He's in Utah now and all is good. All right. So I know here is where I will do my journaling, right? I know I'll do my journaling right there. So this will be probably what I'll do is over here. I need to do a little bit of intro about this trip because here, like why we were headed to California. So I'll end up doing maybe just a little bit of intro right here and then we'll move into this. Um, I think what I did, and even if I didn't do this, if I didn't already take a, I took a screenshot, I think I took a screenshot of the map on um, Maps, Apple Maps or Google Maps or whatever it was. So this is also a fun thing to include, especially if you're traveling, if you're documenting in a traveler's notebook. If you are using a map like that, where you put your current location and then you put your destination and then it shows you visually kind of the map of where you're driving, you can get that to the size where I could actually print that and put it here as the intro to this trip. So. Um, I might even end up printing that out as a full uh, 5 by 8.25 and have that be here and then start talking about the trip here. And then this would be um, this would be kind of talking about part of that trip. So I won't need to do a ton of journaling here. Probably I'm just going to talk about the seven magic mountains. Um, okay, so let's see what else we have here. On the go. Oh, okay, but first. So... But first, now this is something I could do. This but first. Um, okay, hang on. Yes, I had to think about that for a second, you guys. You are in, if you're taking that drive down I-15 um, to California, you bop into Arizona for a really short time and then you're in Nevada. So I, I had to make sure I had that right in my head. That's why I got a little sidetracked for a second. How do I make two single page layouts work? So, um, Julie, I will, um, I'll answer that one in just a second. I think this, but first you guys, this would actually be a great sticker to add over here because this, but first is if I'm doing my journaling, talking about the trip and how we're going out to see my dad because of what happened, the, but first is kind of my, but first dot, 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 and then will lead me into, we stopped here along the way. So I like that, but first I'm going to remember hopefully to use that. Um, oh, I know, this is what I would normally do. I would take, 
um, a sticky note. Um, I know I have stickies. Hang on. Um, a lot of times I will travel in one of my little bags, have sticky notes with me because, ta-da, um, something like that, I, I want to make sure I remember. So here I will write, this will be my um, intro spread to trip, screenshot map. This is a great way to do planning. So even if, and I could have done this while we were driving, um, as we were driving, I could have had my traveler's notebook insert with me. Even if I took nothing else, I took a pen, some sticky notes, and my traveler's notebook insert. I could write as we're going, oh yeah, these are the pictures I took. This is what I want to put here. This is what I want to put here. The nice thing about using sticky notes, though, you guys, is what? They're portable, right? I move it here if I decide to move things around. Then this now could go here instead. So I'm not committed to um, where I'm going to place things. So this goes there. Um, intro spread to trip screenshot map. Um, and then use the butt first sticker. Okay. Um, now that also reminds me of something because I'm gonna put this here. Now while I'm thinking about it, this is one of the reasons I love to do these classes, you guys, because when I'm doing this, I'm actually getting my memory keeping done, right? I don't often have time to do this. So it's a little bit selfish of me to do these classes because I'm getting something done. I love that. Um, okay, here. Um, so as Sam and I were driving, we were listening to podcasts. So listening to podcasts, and I want to make sure to just talk about that a little bit. And I could do a screenshot of some that we listen to. Um, if you are a podcast listener, there is one called How I Built This, which is very amazing and inspiring about different people that have built um, companies like the Ben and Jerry's, the Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Um, the um, lady that invented Spanx, um, lots and lots of companies, all different kinds of companies, but it's really cool. The guy that did the ring doorbell that sold ring doorbell to Amazon for a billion dollars. Um, but it's really cool because they're small entrepreneurs. They start out, they mortgage everything they have. They almost lose their home. They get turned down and turned down and turned down. And the guy that, um, interviews, his name is Guy Raz. The guy that interviews these entrepreneurs is amazing at what he does. So anyhow, and you guys, Sam is 19. Now, most 19-year-olds, well, we started listening to one. He's like, these are cool. Let's listen to another one. And that is literally what we listened to the entire way down. So that's definitely something I want to document. That is part of the story. It doesn't just have to be photos, really. That's going to be more journaling than photos. But the other one that I want to document, um, the Amazon Prime Trucks. So we weren't on the road long where we started going, oh, look, Amazon Prime. Oh, 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 there's, a, oh, there's another one. Oh, my gosh, there's another one. There were so many Amazon Prime trucks um, that we kept seeing on the road that we actually started counting them. And um, so that would, I think, be kind of fun. I'll get a picture from the Internet of an Amazon Prime truck and then tell that story and then probably do some hash marks or something as we were counting. So, um but sticky notes, that's just a good a good way to make sure that you don't forget things that you want to incorporate. Because we took this trip the end of May, and it is now middle of July. And the longer time goes by, the longer it will be that I um, remember some of the things that I want to include. So as long as I took the photos, or at least can make a few notes in my traveler's notebook, then later, when I finally sit down and have time to do this, then I will remember those are the things that I wanted to document. Things that might be a little bit off the beaten path. All right, I way squirreled on that one, you guys. I way, 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 way squirreled. Um, all right, so let's see. This little so much fun. Um, this might work. No, it's not gonna work. So here's the deal. Um, and sometimes I do this as we guys, we guys, as we guys, as we are working um, that I stop because I know there's things that I really want to think about as I'm doing this and I need to document and I don't have a lot of room to document here. Um, and I know I want to Google about seven magic mountains. I don't remember. Um, 
I wanna tell a little bit about those specifically. So I need to Google that. So I'm gonna stop this one for now. This is something that I will definitely come back to and I will finish. Uh, you guys know, sometimes I finish them sooner than others. Uh, sometimes later that day, I will share on Instagram and my Facebook page what things look like and at other times, um, it just takes me a little bit longer. So that I'm gonna come back and finish. All right, the third one, the last one I wanna talk about. Uh, in this particular case, uh, I am documenting uh, the lake. And this is where I was, Priest Lake, right before I drove down to um, Cheney, where I am, outside of Spokane, uh, yesterday afternoon. So I took some photos while I was at the lake. I opened up the app. Um, that creative print app, the Epson creative print app, I pulled some photos in and I printed them um, at the lake. Well, I printed them at the lake. There's a lake house. So I didn't just, you know, miraculously sit in the forest floor and, you know, print. Um, it did need power. So, but I did that right on the fly. Um, but the problem is, is I don't really know where these are going to go. I don't know how far I will continue my traveler's notebook, uh, my notebook series, I guess, about the coronavirus. Since things are heating up again, I, um, I'm pretty sure I will continue them, but probably not as, as detailed as I have in the past. But I don't know if I want these to go into a traveler's notebook for coronavirus, or these might just be a general memory keeping. So my tip for that is if you really don't know where you want to put it, you're not sure what Traveler's Notebook insert it's going to go in yet because I have lots of these running, lots and lots of different Traveler's Notebooks for different things. My tip for that is to, hang on, I got to pull all this stuff over here. Luckily, there's a little windowsill next to me, so I've got some things just loaded up there, ready to go. Okay, my tip for that, I always, 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 this is why I had this for a, a, my scratch paper to work with. Always, always, always when I'm traveling and even at home, I keep a lot of eight and a half by 11 white pieces of cardstock. Um, I'm pretty sure I linked to this one that I use. It is, um, I just buy it on Amazon, like 250 or 500 sheets at a time. The reason why I use eight and a half by 11, and for those of us that are scrapbookers, eight and a half by 11 is a different format. We usually don't have paper in an eight and a half 11 by 11 format, right? Because we have 12 by 12. Eight and a half by 11, especially when it's white, and white I'm going to use as the base for this spread, um, is great because the inserts that I use are 8.25 tall by five inches wide. So on an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock, I can grab out my trimmer and it's eight and a half, right? So all I have to do is trim off a quarter inch from the top. So there's my eight and a half and it's 11. So it's wide enough for me to get two fives out of, right? And that works because I'm using standard wide, which was eight and a quarter by five, but that maximizes one piece of paper really, really well. So I have both of my pieces, oops, don't do that well. I have both of my pieces there. Because I don't know what traveler's notebook that I wanna put this spread in, I'm not going to do it on a traveler's notebook. I'm not going to create it on an insert. I'm gonna create it on these two pieces of paper. And then when I'm ready, I can come in and adhere those pages wherever I want them in whichever traveler's notebook they're going to go into. So it's very similar to what we did. Oh, not that one. Uh, too many traveler's notebooks on the bed. Uh, nope, not that one either. That's my weekly. This one. Very similar to what we did with this piece of pattern paper. Um, I'm just, when I get my spread done, when I decide where I want it to go, I'm just gonna glue those two right in and it's in my, um, it's in my traveler's notebook. So the one thing I do wanna do is I'm going to grab, do wanna do, uh, I'm going to grab my corner rounder and I'm going to round the outside corners. That will help me to make sure 
that I know which is my left and which is my right. Now, you guys have no fear. I know the difference between my left and my right. But sometimes when you are working with two pieces of paper like this that are blank, sometimes you can get them mixed up and not really realize that you did that until it's too late. Or sometimes, this happens too, right? We accidentally turn something upside down and then, especially if I had something on the back side, well, I wouldn't have anything on the back side because I'm gonna glue that. Anyhow, uh, that helps me. That gives me a reference point. And because my insert pages are rounded, then we'll match up great. Okay, so usually when I start, um, oh yeah, I didn't date the last one because I need to go back and look at the date. All right, usually when I start, I'm doing this. And this is just that little technique I do, you guys. I can't do that sitting down, though. Um, I come in and I outline. Now, this is going to be a spread. Going to be. This is going to be a spread. So, and I'm not going to be too worried about them lining up because you'll have kind of the center in between them. But I do want to just do the outside, the bottom, the top, and the outside, not the inside. It wouldn't be bad if I did it the other way, but that's okay. All right, so there we go. There's my spread. Uh, it's almost, you guys, those of you that are scrapbookers, look at, this is almost like a 12 by 12 page, except it's um, 10 by 8.25, but it's a little bit more square in a format that we are used to working with. We've got a little bit of glare. You can tell that the, um, the light is starting to move across the side of the hotel building because I'm getting lots of light from that side. All right, so let's get this out of the way. Let's get this out of the way. Let me get some of these things out of the way, you guys, because it just makes it easier. Um, I don't know if you can see those things. You probably can't, but they're in my way, so we'll get them out of the way. All right, so we have that big picture, and we have this big picture. So, 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 so. Where is this? Oh, okay. So this I pulled from the this particular um, die cut pack, the Everyday Musings from Pink Fresh. Uh, I think that I linked. So this, so happy we're here. This is great. The reason why I'm gonna use this, the reason why I picked this one ahead of time. Oh, what are you guys saying about some good ideas? State tags on cars. Oh. I'm looking, I'm looking, screenshotting things, uh, maps, Team Square Corner. You're funny, Karen. Uh, okay, left side almost looks like a Polaroid. Right. Okay, so here we go. So happy we're here. This die cut I picked, I'm not going to put it on any of the white part. This is great to add right to a photo. It's almost like that um, I used Photoshop and printed, wrote my text here on the photo, but I'm not doing that. I'm gonna put a die cut there. And the reason why that's going to work here is because this is a scenery photo, right? It doesn't really matter what I cover up because we still get the gist that it looks like scenery, right? So if I put this here, the so happy we're here, that could go just kind of right there. I'm not covering up anyone's face, so I don't have to worry about that I accidentally covered up someone's face or I lost part of the scenery because I still have so much here. Um, I'm a big white space person, you guys. I like a lot of white space, especially when you have a really big photo like that. Um, that photo can kind of really just set the stage for everything. So um, I think I will probably end up leaving it like that. But in this case, I'm not going to adhere anything down yet as I'm kind of playing because um, I can already tell that this isn't going to work because I have two that are the same size and I don't want it to do that. So I am going to come in with my, let me get this other trimmer that's across the room. Hang on. It's a little bit smaller. It's a little bit easier to work with. All right, so I think what I wanna do here, I could use this photo as is, um, but I think what I want to do is over here, I think I'm gonna make a strip. So the strip's gonna go all the way down, down like this. So it almost looked like 
a strip from a photo booth, right? Um, and there's, some of them are still around, but when I was young, it was so much fun with my friends to go to a photo booth and um, take the silly pictures. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna trim this in half so I get a little bit of the white still. Okay, and now I need to trim off a little bit of this white because there's too much over there. But I want this to be taller. So I can now come in and pick any of these other single photos and um, add them to either the top or the bottom. And I'm gonna do that one that says, Welcome to the Lake. So when you are um, doing your memory keeping in a traveler's notebook, all right, that I need to just make a little bit skinnier because it's a little bit too wide. And then I'll end up just like gluing that really tight in, adhering it right really tight in. So um, you'll kind of be able to tell, but not really. All right. Um, oh, when you're taking photos of things, you can take photos of things sometimes that can serve as your title or part of the story that you're telling. So we talked about, you know, taking a screenshot of all the Amazon Prime trucks or taking a screenshot of a map or something like that. Here, by having that photo, that little sign that says, welcome to the lake, that now kind of sets the stage for whatever journaling that I wanna do over here on this side. All right, so I pulled some die cuts from the Simple Vintage Great Great Escape Collection. Also pulled some of the washi from the Simple Vintage Great Escape Collection. I brought that with me because I thought I knew we were going to Lake and I knew I might want to do something with that. So I think I could probably use that guy and then maybe this map. I just need to decide how I want to use it, if I want to use it. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if it's going to work. Yeah, I'm not gonna use the washi. Um, so let's come back up here and look at some of this greenery because these little greeneries, I grabbed this from the store downstairs, the store. Um, so the retreat, the camp, Let's see, the Three Craft Chicks Retreat, the Lake Camp Lake Lottawashi. Um, here in a hotel, because the retreat was originally in person, planned here at the hotel. So um, there is a little store that's set up downstairs um, in a conference room, and um, people are shopping virtually. Anyhow, uh, I just grabbed this stuff because I thought, oh, this is fun. This would be great to, um, with the, this would be great to incorporate because it's the forest. And I have all this greenery here. And then I took some pictures of ferns and different things like that there. So that may just go right there. Uh, let's see what else we have here. These little mushrooms are so fun. I think the mushroom maybe might be a good one there. Then let's see. Oh, okay, so you guys, this is what I'm gonna just tell you. If anyone, well, I know there are some people that are from the Spokane-ish area. Um, Priest Lake is about two hours north of here. It is, um, you may have heard of, even if you're not from the area, uh, Coeur d'Alene, a city lake called Coeur d'Alene in a city. Um, it is north of Coeur d'Alene even. Um, it's about 20 miles Priest Lake is about 20 miles from the Canadian border. Um, there are huckleberries everywhere. And the huckleberries are so good, natural huckleberries. So I have, oh, I cut the picture off. Anyhow, little huckleberries. I'm gonna end up doing a spread about the huckleberries because they're so good. Anyhow, there is a uh, little, place called Elkins, um, a little resort on one side of Priest Lake called Elkins, and they have a really good restaurant there. And they make this appetizer with morel mushrooms that is 
oh my gosh, off the hook. Like so, so, so crazy. So I'm really excited about all the mushrooms because I think um, I will go back there tomorrow night before we leave on like Wednesday or Monday night. Anyhow, we're going to go to the restaurant and we're going to have that appetizer. And I think I might use one of these little mushroom things for it because it's they're so good. They're so good. If you are in the area and you ever go to Priest Lake, go to Elkins and have the morel mushroom appetizer because it's amazing. Okay. So as I'm talking, I'm just looking at things, kind of moving things around, seeing what I like, seeing what works. I think that I would like to do some kind of butterfly over here. Uh, I'm just not sure which one yet. And I want to do a butterfly somewhere in here because I'm going to end up doing my journaling around it. But I think that would be kind of fun because I have a lot of white space over here and I want to do journaling. But um, that's going to be a lot of journaling and it's going to be kind of a column here and a column here. Um, Trimmer, Phyllis, this is a, sorry, I missed your first question. As far as I know, you've been asking me that for the last few hours. Sorry about that. Um, this one is a little guillotine trimmer. It is, um, I think it's tonic. It is tonic. I, um, if you go to, well, here in the description of the video, I have a link to the favorites page on my website. And on the favorites page of my website, I have link to a lot of tools like this that I don't carry, but they're just tools that I use. So you would find that, you would find that there or a similar, um, smaller guillotine trimmer there. Guillotine, if you didn't know, that's this, um, an arm like that where it has blade on blade, the guillotine comes down. Well, guillotine from the, yeah, it's actually not a very nice name for a trimmer because if you know, back in the day when they used to chop people's heads off, well, that's not a very nice thought to head into um, in the Traveler's Notebook class. Sorry about that, you guys. This this nice, lovely trimmer that has an arm. There we go. Um, anyway, okay. So I think I kind of like the way that is looking. Um, it really, there's a lot of white space, right? There's definitely a lot of white space, but it really then showcases the photos. And then it will help to showcase um, kind of the story I'm going to tell over here. So I'm ready to commit. I am ready to commit. What I mean by that is I'm ready to, I got to stand up though. I have to, again, you guys, so here's another thing. When I talked before about um, trimming, or not trimming, I just read a comment about the trimmers. Um, when I talked before about grid, even though this isn't really a grid, um, it's very uh, clean. The lines are very clean. Everything is very symmetrical. That's how my mind works. That is like soothing, pleasing to my eyes. So that's generally what I will revert to. Um, as I was, when you're driving, and I did this as I was driving um, on the way down here from the lake, I, um, if I saw a sign or something that I wanted to take a picture of, now I was the only one in the car. I was driving. So um, sometimes ahead of time, you can see that something's coming and so you can pull off and then take a picture. Other times, if you've passed it, sometimes you have to uh, turn around and then come back and take the picture. Um, other times, if you can't get the picture at all, then you just Google. But um, taking pictures of road signs along the way, you guys, because that also tells the story and not the state signs that we just saw. But, um, you know, as I was driving into Spokane, I might see a sign that said Spokane, 28 miles away. If I wanted, I could kind of be journaling this whole trip where it started at the lake. Then I came here to do the retreat. And then this was my drive along the way. And, um, yeah, I don't know how I ended up there, but yeah. Where, where I was headed with that. Who knows, you guys? You know me. Sometimes I get talking and then I'm not really sure what, what I was talking about. I, uh, as I get older, I think that happens more and more. I used to, when I, when I teach Traveler's Notebook um, classes in person, especially like the intro ones where I'm starting to talk about what you might use a Traveler's Notebook for and I kind of make jokes and things, um, I would joke that, you know, as we get older, we kind of lose track of what we're doing sometimes. And you might be at the top of the stairs and, and um, you might be at the top of the stairs and think, oh, I need to go downstairs to do X. And you get to the bottom of the stairs and you're like, why did I come downstairs? Literally, you cannot remember. So then I'd say, and that's why I use a traveler's notebook. At the top of the stairs, I write down uh, what I'm going to 
do when I get to the bottom of the stairs? And then people look at me like I'm crazy and have two heads. And I say, yeah, I'm not that bad. I'm just kidding. But you could. All right. So there we go. That I love that little cluster there. And those red mushrooms just make me happy. They're just cute. The little toadstools or, and their little grouping of the three is just cute. Cute, cute. All right. There we go. So now over here. these guys. And before I put this down, I want to make sure that I, since that little guy's separate. Get that straight. Um, this is another, I, I tell you guys that I stand when I craft. I stand when I teach. Um, if you are not a standing crafter, um, if you stand sometimes like I am now, especially if I'm trying to take something like this and make sure it is level and lined up ish with what I'm putting above it. If you stand, that will give you sometimes the perspective that you need. So standing is not a bad thing. Colleen, have a wonderful rest of your, oh, a virtual Q&A with James Darren. That sounds exciting. Um, Mom, finish your sentence. Yes, I know, right? Right, Roberta? Our kids think we're dingalings. Totally thinks they're, we're dingalings, huh? Okay, so this guy now, let's see. I think this is going to go right here. And I'm actually, I was thinking before that I was going to journal around that, but I'm not. I'm going to leave that space up there. I'm going to do my journaling down here. I'm going to put this little guy. I kind of wish that he, she was a different color but not the red, that's too much red. Uh, I really wish it was a full butterfly, that color, but it's not. And if I try to put those two together, that looks like there's something happened in the metamorphosis stage of that butterfly. Didn't quite work out. Um, all right, so that's okay. We'll just use what we have. We will use, what, there's a lot of half butterflies in here. Um, all right, we are going to use what we have. So that, that one's, and I wish this guy was going the, facing the other direction. Hang on. Let me look one more. This is, okay, this one's facing the other direction. What if it kind of goes like that? Yeah, no. Yep, we need a full one, so it's, this full one is going to be it. I know I'm standing, but I'm kind of squatting. Oh, that, that sounds horrible. Um, because the table's too low, so we'll see how that goes for me. We'll see how that works. Now, I said mostly I don't do things at an angle, but the butterfly is okay to be at an angle because it would look weird maybe that way. Maybe not. We're going to go with it. Okay, so now, um, this white space up there, I've almost done something called trapped white space. So um, I've left some white space around this, so it's not necessarily trapped. But if I had something that's kind of right here, I have this trapped white space there. Um, and generally, I don't like to have trapped white space like that. And I did leave a little bit of extra room around here, but I wanna put something just a little bit in there so it looks like I kind of intended to do that, which I did. But I wanna put, I think, a little word strip sticker up in there. So word strip stickers, you guys, those are my go-to. Um, they really are my go-to, and I think they're kind of an unsung hero when it comes to crafting because I think a lot of people look at something like this and go, well, I don't even know why would I use that? How would I use that? For me, it's sometimes it's just a space filler. It's just a little space filler. So I know I want to do black, I think. So let's see what we have here. Uh, travel the world over to find the beautiful. That could work. Um, never, no, great thing, no, keep it stay simple, so the adventure begins, mm, no, not that one, um, take risks, choose to shut, beauty and simplicity, ah, that might work, so let's see, there is beauty and simplicity, so this guy, it's going to depend on how long it is, it's too long, so what I can do sometimes, like I did over here, I could cut something like that in half, so I would do this before I cut it in half. I'd say there's beauty and simplicity. I'm not going to like that because it's going to be too stacked. I can tell if I stack it, I have a stacked title here. I've got stacked over here. I don't want both of those to be stacked. So I know that's not going to work as nice of a little saying as that is. I need to find something that's a little bit smaller. 
Um, look on the bright side. I feel so, maybe I feel so lucky. Um, oh no, here we go. Everything has beauty. That might work. Let's see. Everything has beauty. You know what? I to I'm totally changing what I was going to do. I'm going to put this guy right here. Everything has beauty. So, I didn't stick it down all the way yet. Because I think I've got too much now of a trapped white space right there. So if I do like that, everything has beauty. I think that's going to work. I think that's gonna. I keep saying gonna. I think that is going to work. Now, the nice thing about that, because I have sticker on sticker and they're both, well, not sticker on sticker, um, die cut, sticker on die cut. This is a paper sticker. Um, this is a paper die cut. If I need to pull that off later because I want to move things around, it should be okay for me to pull off later. Uh, all right. So I think... Maybe something there, but let's see. Um, no, I know I can already tell date's not going to work there. Date could work there, but it's not going to work there. Date could work sideways. No, um, I will add date later. Um, all right, you guys. So I think what we're going to do is we are going to call this one good as well because I need to take a little bit of time to do the journaling and um, we don't need to do that together. We are, we've run, not run past because there's no, you know, length of time that's specific to these videos, but I am going to, I will finish that one later and then I will post that on um, Instagram and on my Facebook page uh, when I get that finished. So I am going to uh, flip the camera we're gonna try. Yay, we love it when it works like that. Okay, hang on. Um, oh boy. Another thing I need to tighten. Hang tight. Hang tight, friends. Oh, look, there's my hand. Uh. Okay, we're good. I'm gonna sit back. Oh, I better not sit back down again. I'll sit on the bed that has all of the things all over it. Um, that's funny. When I'm done, I should take a picture. I should, when I'm done, I should take my phone and then I'm going to take my phone off and then I'll show you what everything looks like because you guys, it's a, it's a total disaster in here. Okay, friends. Um, that's another Saturday. That was fun. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I've missed a ton of comments in the chat. So I, um, I am going to look forward tonight when, when I wind things down, when things wind down at the retreat, I am going to, um, come back upstairs. I'll probably have a little glass of wine in my hotel room and read through the chat just so I can see what you guys are saying because you guys are all chatting, interacting, and I catch a little bit of it, but I miss a lot of it. And I want to, um, I want to be part of that. So, um, right now I have no plans for next week. Well, I shouldn't say I have no plans. Um, right now, I do not have a plan to do our class next weekend. I had said that I was going to start doing maybe a couple of a, a couple of month. Um, I won't rule next weekend out yet. I just am not sure if it's going to happen. So um, we'll see. I might start having FOMO. I might have fear of missing out, even though I would be the one that would be doing it. Um, so we'll see. Stay tuned for that. I owe you guys a lot of links. So um, I will come back in the comment or in the um, the description of the video, which is always the part that you see um, kind of underneath the video. There's all kinds of links and things, all kinds of resources and products that you can purchase and things. I will link to um, the coronavirus collection that I was using. I will link to, oh, see, I should have been making notes. Um, I don't remember what else. Look on Google for, oh, okay. Um, I need to remember what else I was going to link to. Oh, I know, Carrie Bradford stamps. Um, I will remember what else I was going to link to. Um, you guys, thanks for joining us. If you are part of um, the Camp Lake Lottawashi retreat, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And that's just a little preview, although 
we'll kind of back up a little bit and um, well you guys all have a kit everyone that's here for the here for the retreat here for the virtual retreat that i will be teaching um later this afternoon um now you have kind of a little feel for how you can memory keep in a traveler's notebook and we will um, do some work in getting your traveler's notebook all set up to have fun with Friends, thank you for joining me from my hotel room um, in Cheney, Washington. And um, everybody have a wonderful rest of the weekend and take care. Now, don't leave yet because I'm going to show you. Um, I am going to pull this off. I'm going to try to pull this off. This is generally when, oh, okay, hang on, uh, flip. There we go. Okay, this is generally when I accidentally dial 911 on my phone. I did that uh, twice last night. Anyhow. So I thought I'd just show you what all this looks like. I'm backing up in the room. Here is the, this is where I've been. There is the, oh, you know what? Can you guys see that? Is it sideways? It's sideways. There we go. I think I'm fixing it. Hang on. I'm seeing if we're rotating. Are we rotating? I hope. Well, this is just gonna, okay, there we go, good. All right, um, anyhow, there's the windowsill that has all my things. Here's the little table I've been working at pulled out from the big desk. Um, here's the bed. Look at this. Well, here's one of the beds, but stuff, stuff, stuff everywhere. That is the cute pillow I case I was telling you guys about from the retreat. Oh, that's another thing I was going to do. I will link so you can find out information on the retreats that Three Craft Chicks does. And then here we are. So we'll just take one other look this way, you guys. But look at there I was sitting right there. Now I will tell you what I'm going to do. I will um, I will end up taking a photo. I already took a photo of the pillowcase on the bed over there, but I will end up taking a photo of all of this and this will go in my traveler's notebook that I am using to document the, the retreat. Um, oh yes, Julie, how to make two single pages work together. All right, while I have... Um, while well, I have you, because I will forget that later. If anyone wants to stick around and um, kind of tune in while I talk about that. So I'll just be holding the phone as we do this. Um, let me come back to this one because I don't have a ton of examples with me. Um, this one. So these um, really had nothing to do with each other. This is in my tra coronavirus traveler's notebook. On this side, this is where I'm talking about, um, I had pulled this from some website um, where they were talking about how at that point in early April, they were thinking that, well, now I think they know, theoretically they know, we don't really know anything, but um, that she, coronavirus could spread by, you know, whatever. So this was a single page that I did. Over here, this is something entirely different. This is see which states and cities have total residents to stay at home. So what I tried to do here to make these two work next to each other, there's a lot of white space, right? There is a lot of white space and I've used pretty big titles. So that title pretty much stands out. And then I have the big date stamp there and then those letter stickers. So even though they really don't go together, I've used some of the same kind of design elements, large words, large text, and a lot of white space to make those two go together so that they don't, um, so that they don't necessarily look wacky next to each other. So now let me see, um, and I kind of did the same thing there. Those are two different things. Um, a lot of white space. Uh, let's see if we have others though. That's a double page spread, double page spread, double page spread. I think I'm going to end up with a lot of double page spreads in here. So if I had some of my other traveler's notebook inserts with me, um, I would be able to show you more of that. So you know what I'll do? Um, Okay, who is that again? Um, da, 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 da. Oh, Julianne. Okay, I am going to make a note when we are done. Um, actually, this one I can talk about in a sec. I will make a note to when we do our next uh, kind of work with me, when we're doing memory, excuse me, when we're doing memory keeping in a traveler's notebook, I will do um, a spread that has... Uh, not a spread. I will do two separate pages that are together in a spread and we'll talk about how we can make that work. But really quick on this guy. 
So these two really didn't go together. This one over here was a um, photo of a um, kind of a calendar, a dry erase calendar that I have in our pantry that normally I was using to track um, our traveling. So when Nick and I would be out of town and things like that, different events that we had to do, um, that eventually in the coronavirus turned into that's what we're that's what we're eating. That eat is a sign in the pantry on the wall. And this over here was just kind of a funny little meme that you might have seen floating around the internet. 2020 is a unique leap year. It has 29 days in February, 300 days in March, and five years in April. So the way that I made both of these tie together, even though they really have nothing to do with each other, is the font. So that font in the sign that's on the wall in the pantry, this font, I found a font that was pretty similar. And then I just use some of the pink that was there and the pink that was there. So by just either combining fonts uh, or similar like fonts, a uh, lot of white space, I think is one, one way to make that really easy. And then just putting similar colors um, on both sides, that will really help to make things look a little bit, um, a little bit more cohesive, even when you have two separate, really, they're not a spread, they're two separate pages. So hopefully that helped a little bit, but I love that topic. I will make sure that we cover that one kind of from scratch when um, we do our next kind of memory keeping in a traveler's notebook. All right, friends. Uh, oh, I know I can't do that. I can at least do this on um, our sideways. So, ooh, look at that. It's really bright right there. We don't like that. Well, anyway, whatever. I can't look too much because then I get too distracted. Um, all right, friends. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a wonderful weekend. And oh, yes, that's another good one. Um, lining your page, Heather. So I love that. Um, if you do the outline on both sides, even though it is not, um, even though they're separate pages, that will help to bring it together a little bit too. Okay, you guys. Um, oh, look, the parking lot. A free Karen. Uh, that's good, Karen. Um, all right, friends, thank you. Thank you for joining me from the hotel and um, have a great weekend. Goodbye.